Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is Screencast 4.3 for VCE Unit 4 Physics Interactions of Light and Matter. We'll be looking at single slit diffraction and Maxwell's wave theory. So what I would like to do to this time round is um, look at single slit diffraction. Last time we had the double slit and Young's experiment and we were able to explain that the diffraction and constructive and destructive interference cause that pattern. What I would like to do is look at the pattern we get from a single slit, um, light passing through the single slit and explain that based on what we know. So we get a large maximum arriving in the middle and then some alternating dark and light bands but you can sort of see what I've tried to replicate here is a large band and then the width of them actually decreases uh, and the intensity sort of drops off as we get further away. So the way that we might we'll try and explain this is by looking at the dark band. So what happens is that as we head the light heads towards the middle band, say in this instance, light, you know, we're fitting a couple of wavelengths through, and light from, say, this first or the outer band and the middle band are out of phase by half a wavelength. What that means as we, as we work our way down is the next wave and the other one will be out of phase and the next one down and the one below that will be out of phase. So each of the waves here are uh, interact with each other and cause destructive interference. And there we get that black band appearing on the screen. Now what's important for any significant diffraction to occur is that the wavelength must be proportional to the slit width. Okay, so light passing through a doorway is not going to cause diffraction where we're going to see an interference pattern. Okay, so we need a very narrow slit width that's somewhere down in a similar region to that of the wavelength. So to observe diffraction um, we're only going to see it when we have the right conditions. So what we want is a point source. We want that point source to produce monochromatic light so we've got the one wavelength and it needs to pass through a very small aperture so that is that the gap between the two slit, the slit itself. Diffraction gratings are something that they use and it's basically it's a small piece of glass or plastic it has stacks of slits and what it does is it produces um, basically rainbow patterns as the light passes through it. So it looks something like that. You know, you sort of got your light, we've got the slit here to kind of create more like a point source passing through the diffraction grating and we get this constructive destructive interference patterns. Here we've got at the center that complete constructive interfer uh, interference. So at this point on the journey we've gone from thinking lights acting like particles to now saying yeah, look, light's definitely showing properties of waves. It's acting, behave, uh, behaving as, uh, as though it's a wave. And the next major step came from Maxwell. So 1864, he came up with this suggestion that light was actually made up of these alternating or, uh, you know, uh, electrical and magnetic fields that are operating perpendicular to each other. So a self-propagating is, is the key word there. Um, the electromagnetic radiation induces the magnetic field and vice versa, um, causing it to, to self-propagate. Um, really, the, the meaning of all of that's not super important for your exam. It's just the concept that, hey, we've now got this new theory that helps back up this wave model of light. Now, Basically, that's what I was just saying, that it sort of induces itself and back. The, the big thing about this theory was that it provided a theoretical value for the speed of light. And more so, they predicted other forms of electromagnetic radiation existed other than light that they were unaware of. So the predictions came, the discoveries came later to then validate uh, the predictions that he made. 
Okay, so that's it for looking at light as a wave. Next screencast, we start moving into some more interesting properties of light that contradict what this, uh, what these, these evidences have shown us about light.